promise. One day, me and my dad spent some time together out of the house while Tor and Mom planted some flowers in the garden. Me and my dad love spending time together. We call it breaking bread. He teaches me everything I need to know about life and what it takes to be a man as well as a servant of Yah. You know, Zion, your mom loves pretzels. I will bring her some back home. You know, Torah, your dad gave me a lily similar to this one when we got married. Can, Can you, you tell me the story, story again of how you all met? met? Well, me and your mom met a long time ago, back when we were young. It was my first day at the Hebrew bakery. My parents had me buy bread from your granddad's bakery because back then, a lot of the breads at the store had pork-derived mono and diglycerides as ingredients, but your granddad's shop was free from unclean ingredients. Your granddad was hiring a new set of bakers. I can say I wasn't the best at baking, but I was willing to learn how to bake in order to earn some extra money to get through college. Then I saw the most perfectly made flaky crust bread that I had ever seen. Wait, is that the baker? I thought, she's beautiful. Um, can I help you? Oh yes, the new intern. Shalom, I'm Anaya. You need to put this apron and hairnet on. This was the only place that understood why I didn't cut my beard. So I didn't care if I had to wear the hairnet. At least I could keep my beard. Your mom had some baking skills and still does. She loved Yah's word just as much as I did and still do. She even made extra bread to feed the homeless. Making bread from scratch is a labor of love. Seeing how your mom showed her love for Yah made me realize she was going to be an amazing wife to me and a great mother to our children. My father taught me at a young age about keeping myself pure until marriage and faithfulness and commitment to one woman, not to commit adultery and to have one Elohim. My dad also instructed me from Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 3 and 4 that I shouldn't marry someone from another nation because they will turn my heart away from following Yah and could lead me to serving other gods. Oh yeah, that's just like in Genesis chapter 28 and verse 1 and verses 6 through 9 when Isaac tells Jacob to not take a wife from the Canaanites. And in 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 4, when Solomon's many wives turned away his heart to other gods. Exactly. In Genesis, Yah created one man named Adam. Yah took one rib from Adam to make a woman, and that was his helpmate. Adam named the woman Eve, and they became one. Yah did not remove more than one rib from Adam to make more helpmates for him, just Eve. Great, great 2,000 times over, Granddad and Yaakov had many wives, even though he wanted to just be with one wife. He hated one and loved the other, which caused a lot of strife amongst them and their children, even to the point where they sold great, 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 great Uncle Joseph into slavery. In Exodus chapter 24, verses 6 through 8, our Israelite ancestors made a covenant with Yah that they and their offspring would be his people and be obedient to his commands, not to commit adultery and to serve any other Elohim. Malachi chapter 2, verse 15 says, Did he not make them one with a portion of the Spirit in their union? And what was the one Elohim seeking? offspring who would serve Yah. So guard yourselves in your spirit, and let none of you be faithless to the wife of your youth. Your dad is a man of great knowledge. But when we first met, baking was not his forte. Man, I can't believe I just missed the bowl. 
This is so embarrassing. That's what I get for trying to do a layup with the egg. It's okay. This happened to me too on my first day here. You'll get the hang of it. Y'all exalts the humble. Try cracking the egg on the side of the bowl. Told off for your encouragement, Anaya. This technique is way better. Now I need you to add the yeast, flour, and water. Your dad never quits. He continued to learn and became an excellent baker. He even had one of his well-known unleavened pizzas on the bakery's menu. What I had grown to love about your dad was that he was a servant of Yah, and he really embodied Yeshua's word that the greatest among us will be a servant. Your dad is gentle and lowly in heart because he is a follower of Yeshua. Yeshua's yoke is easy and burden is light. I'm not talking about egg yolk, but I'm referring to the yolk as in what bonds us to Yah as servants to him, similar to how an egg yolk binds ingredients together. <laughs> when your dad met the rest of my family, he was so pleasant. My brothers really liked your dad when they first met him. They're pretty protective over me, and your dad is the same way towards me and you. Most importantly, my dad was so happy, a young man who was a servant of Yah and hardworking, wanted to marry his pure daughter. Your dad said he asked your granddad if he could marry me. Your granddad said, hallelujah, and gave him a big hug and agreed. That night, your father asked me to marry him. I was delighted to join him in marriage. I always had dreamt about the day Yah would place me back to the body he took me from. I'm your dad's rib and I wouldn't fit with anyone else. And one day, Torah, if it's Yah's will, he will have you complete your husband just like he did for me and dad. Did dad I give you a ring? No, your dad gave me lilies as a gift and they were so beautiful. Rings are an Egyptian custom. I didn't need an expensive ring to symbolize our marriage and commitment to each other. Love is shown through following the commandments of Yah, not through a piece of jewelry I could lose or take off whenever I didn't feel like being married. That is such a wonderful story. But if that is how you all met, how did I get here? Uh, we'll talk about that when you're a little older. Toda yeah.